Hi, welcome to Snakes and Others. We're continuing the uh, introducing series and in this one we are going to be discussing the North American king snakes. So king snakes and milk snakes both belong to the family Lampropeltis and it's a big group uh, with subgroups within it. So we're going to narrow that search down. We're always concerned in these introduction videos with beginner species. So we're going to take the North American kings and they are from something called the Getulus complex. So there are different species within that and they span coast to coast across North America from Florida through to California. The common species that we would come across are Californian kings, uh, affectionately known as Cali kings, Mexican black king snakes, Florida king snakes, South Florida king snakes, and chain kings. So these all have the first two names, Lampropeltis getulus in their Latin name. And then they have their subspecies third name, which is what differentiates them. Their care is pretty much universal and there's minimal difference in adult size and dietary habits. Uh, you're gonna end up with a snake that's between four and a half and five and a half feet long. They're gonna be relatively heavily set but they're only going to have small heads. In the wild, uh, they are reptile specialist feeders, whether that be snakes or lizards. And uh, fun fact, they're immune to rat snake venom. So hey, that's pretty cool. Um, they are incredibly active constrictors with their food. And when it comes to feeding, uh, it's actually hard to find a better feeding beginner species than a king snake. On occasion with babies, this does work against them because they think with their belly first rather than their brain and assume that the reason that you've gone into their vivarium is to feed them. They do grow out of this and with regular handling become totally tame. Now, there are morphs available of these king snakes, but they don't need all the genetic tomfoolery that they do with corn snakes because some of the colours that are available are insane. They're awesome. Um, and we've got variations within different species as well. Probably the most prized of the group is Mexican black king snakes. Once upon a time, 15, 20 years ago, they were commonplace and they used to sell for 15, 20 quid a piece. Everybody had them. And then they went through uh, the doldrums. Everybody stopped working with them. And then as people have realised that the bubble has burst with royal pythons and their prices, that they suddenly decided they want to get back into the collier breeds and namely the kings. And uh, people are starting to go after these again. So Mexican black kings have shot up in value. Uh, being anything from sort of 60 to 80 pounds each, even as babies, which is, you know, not an inconsiderable amount of money considering where they came from. The more affordable species would be the Floridas or the Californian king snakes, which usually retail for between 30 and 50 pounds, depending on the morph. Um, they are incredibly hardy. They do not require any extra humidity to be able to shed their skin. Uh, they're smooth scaled with no keel, so they're incredibly glossy feel lovely to handle, really nice snakes. Um, and I, you shouldn't really have any issues with them at all. We're gonna keep them in a three foot, if in exceptional circumstances, four foot vivarium. A heat pad will be okay for the younger animals, but as always, you know, if we're going into bigger vivs, I do prefer people to use bulbs, simply because it warms the air and it more evenly distributes the heat throughout the vivarium, allowing the snake to thermoregulate a bit better. If the animals are to be kept in a rack system, then fair enough, yeah, heat pads, no problem. But, you know, this again is a video for beginners, not for breeders. So nine out of ten pet keepers are going to have it in a vivarium on display in the home. So, yeah, probably a, uh, a good, reliable day-night dimming thermostat, a bulb with a cage around it, a hot end of 30 degrees, cool end of about 24, and then at night the temperatures can drop to 24 degrees. They've got fast metabolisms. They seem to poo for England. So uh, you can feed them and we're probably going to get two poos a week. We'll fully clean them out every four to six weeks. Um, they have small heads. They don't take the mammalian prey in the wild, even though they'll avidly take it in captivity. They're more likely to take reptiles, which are a lot more slender. And over time, their heads have developed to be quite small because they just don't need a massive gob. because they're not taking things with hip girdles for a start. Um, so 
if you try giving them the bigger meals, you might find that they regurgitate or refuse the food. So you may need to keep your king snake or milk snake on smaller size prey for longer before we transition up through the sizes. So um, I would say that if you took a corn snake at five feet and a king snake at five feet, the king snake's probably going to be on this size below what the corn snake is on, simply because the corn snake's head is probably about 20% longer and therefore the gape is wider than the king snake. Um, they come in a variety of either plain, like Mexican black, they come uh, with bands such as the Californian king, stripes with the Californian king, or saddles and speckles, which is the Floridas and the chains. My personal favourite is the Brooks king snake, previously known as the South Florida king snake. Absolutely stunning. Uh, you can't really go wrong. Uh, they're pretty much bomb proof. Uh, they are coming back in numbers. Definitely worth consideration from corn. After all, a lot of people keep corn snakes, and whilst corn snakes make fabulous uh, beginner pets, so do kings. Um, and if they're handled regularly, we've got no issues at all. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the videos. We'll try and keep them coming. Uh, please make suggestions if you want species groups to be listed. I've already had one request for Russian rat snakes, so uh, I'll in in include that in the Eurasian rat snake video that I do for the beginner stuff, because there are some great beginner stuff over there. Uh, we're just trying to help educate people. Feel free to share the videos uh, and visit the website, see what we're all about. Cheers.